Hi there everyone, I've got an absolutely fascinating motor testing video for you today. We've got a dozen different motors to test, including a heap of pilot branded motors from Ethics, Rotor Riot and FPV Cycle, as well as some brand new racing motors from Axis Flying and some new 2306 motors from VCI Hobby. We've also got a couple of really unique motors in the mix, including a rather interesting size from Bubby FPV and a split magnet motor design from FPV Cycle that is unlike anything I've seen before. It's a lot to cover in one video, let's not waste any more time, let's dive right into it. Alright, before we dive into the test results, I want to familiarise you with all of these motors on the bench. Starting over here with these two motors from VCI Hobby. This is their Titan 2306. 1850kV, it's got this purple and gold colour scheme with a Unibel Design M3 shaft screw and they do another version of this motor which is called the gold, it's got a gold and purple colour scheme, slightly higher kV, 1950kV, same 2306 data size, same Unibel Design and M3 shaft screw. We're then looking at two new motors from Axis Flying. These are their new racing motors. We've got a 2207, it's a Unibel design with a red and grey colour scheme, 2100 kV, so a really high kV, and an M3 shaft screw. And then similar, we've got a new 2306 from Axis Flying. This is the same 2100 kV, slightly smaller stator size. It's a Unibel design with an M3 shaft screw as well. Then we're looking at some Pilot branded motors. These are from Rotor Riot. We've got the Elevate by Cricket FPV, which is a 2306.5, 1750 kV motor. It's got this black and gold color scheme, Unibel design with an M3 shaft screw. We have this motor from Let's Fly RC, again made by Rotor Riot. This is a 2306, 1850 kV. It's got a purple and green color scheme and an M3 shaft screw. We've got the Hype Train Vanover. So this is Vanny's motor. This is 2021 kV. It's a 2207 stator size, and it's got a Unibel design, this blue and silver color scheme, M3 shaft screw. We have this motor from PDEVX. This is a 2306.5, 1985 kV. It's got this matte black and bronze color scheme, Unibel design with an M3 shaft screw. Now we have something a little different. This is the Bubby FPV. This is a 2205 size motor. So it's a smaller stator size. It's got this metallic pink color scheme, Unibel design, M3 shaft screw, and all of the Rotor Riot hype train motors we're gonna be looking at today all have ESO bearings. This has 2004 kV, so it's a smaller stator size, but a much higher kV. We've got the Mr. Steel FX Stout V5 motor. This is a 2307, it's a Unibel design. It's got 1950 kV, and it's got this kind of metallic blue color scheme, which I think is really good looking. It's got an M2 shaft screw, this one, a little bit different from the other motors, and obviously slightly bigger stator as well. And finally, we've got two motors from FPV Cycle. This is the most recent version of the FPV Cycle 25mm with the split magnets. It's got a Unibel design, but I've also brought out the older version of this FPV Cycle 25mm motor for comparison. These have the same rated KV, 1870 KV, and they're the same stator size as well. So it'd be interesting to see how the split magnets varies from the original design. And I'm gonna show you these split magnets in just a second. All right, so let me show you what I mean by split magnets in this FPV cycle motor. You can see that rather than having a single magnet per pole, this FPV cycle motor has two magnets and they're somewhat offset so that the, uh, the rotor has some sort of skew to it. Now, skewing a rotor like this is pretty typical in um, brushless DC motors that are designed for low RPM, high torque applications. So pretty different from what we do with our FPV motors. Normally, motors that are designed for high RPM, high power applications um, don't have any skew, but FPV Cycle has decided to uh, try and apply some skew to this rotor using this split magnet design, and it does have an effect on performance, as we're going to see. All of these motors were provided to me as part of my open door motor testing policy, where you can send me motors, props, batteries, ESCs, and VTXs, and I will test them, publish the results, and then ship the product back to you, all free of charge. Needless to say, someone was very interested to know how all of these different pilot branded motors compared to each other. 
All of this independent scientific product testing is only possible with your support. So if you're enjoying these test results, please consider supporting me either directly through my Patreon or indirectly using the affiliate links you can find down in the video description or on AOSRC.com. If you're thinking of making a big purchase from Amazon, why not click through on my Amazon affiliate link? It won't cost you anything. Amazon will make a bit less profit off of you and they'll send some money my way so that I can continue to make testing videos like this for all of you. I really would appreciate any support that you can give. With that said, it's time to dive into the test results, starting with measured KV. I measure KV by driving the motor at 10 volts, full throttle, and recording the RPM using an optical RPM sensor. Divide that RPM by 10 gives us the KV in RPM per volt. All right, so measured KV is not usually the most interesting chart to look at. Differences of one or 2% in either direction are pretty normal. But here we see some pretty interesting results. Starting with the Hype Train PDEVX, that tests out 4% lower than its rating. So it's rated at 1980 kV, but it's testing out closer to 1900 kV. We have the FPV Cycle 25 millimeter split magnet. Now the, the older version of the FPV Cycle, pretty close to its rating, about 2% or so, but the split magnet has a measured KV 7% higher than its rating. So it's rated at 1870 KV and it's testing out over 2000 KV. It's a huge difference. It's the biggest I've ever seen. We also have the Hype Train Bubby FPV 2205. That's rated at 2004 KV, but it tests out quite a bit higher, closer to 2100 KV. It's a 4% difference again. So for some of these motors, what's written on the motor is quite different from the KV that we measure. The KV of a motor obviously has a massive effect on the amount of thrust that it can produce. I measure thrust by driving the motor full throttle at 24 volts on a standard HQ 5 x 4.5 x 3 V1S test prop. Here are the results of the maximum thrust test. And I've also added the thrust to weight ratio of each motor as a number above the bar. So looking at something like the Bubby FPV 2205, you can see that it doesn't produce all that much thrust, around 1500 grams, but it's a very lightweight motor, which means its thrust to weight ratio, 54.3, is very good. In fact, it's equivalent to the Hype Train Vanover motor. So the Vanover produces about 17% more thrust, but it also weighs about 17% more. So they have the same thrust to weight ratio. Another very interesting comparison to make is between the two FPV cycle 25 millimeter motors. The older version with a single piece magnet produces about 1825 grams of thrust with a thrust to weight ratio close to 50. The split magnet design of the same motor produces significantly less thrust and the thrust to weight ratio is also reduced. So you can see that moving to a split magnet design reduces the maximum thrust. As well as maximum thrust, we also care about motor efficiency. Motor efficiency has a big impact on flight time and it also has a big impact on motor heating. Inefficient motors tend to get a lot warmer than efficient motors. Efficiency is calculated by the thrust test stand by taking the torque that the motor is producing multiplied by the RPM to get the mechanical power out from the motor and then dividing that by the electrical power being consumed by the ESC. These efficiency results are really interesting because they include the most efficient motor I have ever tested, the VCI Titan 2306 1850 kV, clocking in at an impressive 82.7% efficient. That's amazing for a five inch motor. At the other end of the scale, they also include the least efficient motor I have ever tested, the Bubby FPV 2205. Not quite 71% efficient, it's not a very efficient motor. Most of them fall between about 76 and 78% efficient, with a couple of good performers in the Cricket Elevate and the Hype Train PDEVX, which stand out as being more efficient than the rest. The torque versus RPM curve is a fantastic tool for assessing not only the magnetic performance of a motor, but also the effect of KV. I measure torque using a flywheel dyno test where I use the motor to accelerate a flywheel of a known inertia from 5,000 to 20,000 RPM as fast as possible at 50% throttle. The torque versus RPM curves are my favorite charts because they show you so much information about the performance of the motor. You can see the magnetic performance of the motor by looking at the maximum torque the motor is able to produce, which occurs around 10,000 RPM for most of these motors. And you can also look at how the torque falls off with increasing RPM, which shows you the effect of the motor's KV. Starting from the bottom and working our way up, we have the Bubby FPV 2205. This is a smaller motor, smaller stator size, so it's no surprise it produces a little bit less torque. Then we have the Ethics Mr. Steel Stout V5, 
Um, this is a 2307 size motor, so it's actually a bigger stator size. It's surprising it's not producing more torque, but this is likely due to the motor using weaker magnets, maybe N48 or N42 magnets, to produce a motor with less top end power, less torque, but more low, low throttle control, which we know is what Mr. Steele likes. Then we have a bunch of 2306 size motors, 2306.5 from um, Axis Flying, from Rotor Riot and from VCI. And then we get into the 2207. So we've got a 2207 from Axis Flying, which is this uh, kind of mid blue here. That's producing a good amount of power. And then we have up at the top, the Hype Train Vanover, which is producing heaps of torque, clearly using very, very strong magnets and 2207 size. And we also have the Hype Train Cricket Elevate, which is doing what a big motor should do. It's 2306.5, that's a big stator size, and it's a low KV, so it's producing a lot of torque. And you can see that the low KV is shifting the peak of that torque curve down to lower RPMs. And then finally, at the very top, we have the FPV Cycle 25mm, which has always been a motor that produces excellent torque. But this is the single magnet version. The split magnet version has ooh, about 25% less torque or so. It's a really big reduction in torque. Skewing the, the magnets like this and having a split magnet design drastically reduces the peak torque that the motor is able to produce. This also explains its reduction in power. The final chart we're going to look at is motor responsiveness. And here we're measuring how fast the motor can accelerate my HQ 5x4.5x3 test prop from 10 to 50% throttle and back again. We do that multiple times and take the average. And what we're looking for is a motor that can accelerate and decelerate the prop really, really fast. The faster a motor can accelerate and decelerate a prop, the faster it can change the thrust that that prop is producing. And that helps the quad stay much more stable in the air. The FPV cycle 25 millimeter, the older version with the single magnet, is a very responsive motor. It's able to accelerate and decelerate a test prop nice and quickly. Because it's got a bit more inertia in the bell, you do see that it struggles a little bit with deceleration compared to something like a 2207. The Axis Flying 2207 and the Hype Train Vanover 2207 both do really well in terms of responsiveness. And this is why I tend to recommend 2207 class motors to people for five inch props, because that 2207 size is, is really good for responsiveness overall. Looking lower down on the chart, we see that motors with a smaller stator size, motors with weaker magnets, motors that produce less torque are all less responsive. And this is a problem because the less responsive a motor is, the harder it is to change the RPM, the prop to change the thrust, the less stable your quad's gonna be in the air, the less locked you're gonna be able to get your tune. And so it's, it's eventually it's gonna filter through to your flight experience. So I would always push to try and get the most responsive motor that you can afford or that's available um, where you're shopping to get the best possible experience when you're actually flying the quad. Now that we've looked at all of the parameters individually, it's time to bring them all together and look at the summary scores. I calculate the score for each parameter by taking the performance of the motor on that parameter and dividing by the average performance for all of the five inch motors that I tested. This means that an average motor will get a score of 100%, a motor that's 10% better than average will get a score of 110%, and a motor that's 10% worse than average will get a score of 90%. To calculate the total score for a motor, I take its score on maximum thrust, efficiency, torque and responsiveness and average all those scores together to give the motor's total score. I also create a weight normalized score by taking the total score of each motor and normalizing by its weight. This allows motors that are smaller and lighter to compete on a level playing field with motors that are bigger and heavier. All right, so here are the summary scores, and I've added in a handful of other motors to put these motors that we're testing today in context in the whole range of five inch motors that I've tested. And I've tested over 70 different motors now, so I can't fit them all on one chart, and I'm not even gonna try. If you wanna look at all of the results, you can find the results for all of the motors that I've tested over on AOSRC.com. And if you want the full detailed database of motor testing results, that's available on my Patreon, um, and I'll put a link to that down in the video description. Looking at the summary scores chart, we do see something a little bit interesting, which is that the type of flying that a pilot likes to do does seem to have an effect on the performance of their motor. For example, the hype train Vanover, that's Vanny's motor, we would expect he's a racing pilot, he would want maximum torque, power, responsiveness, and minimum weight. So his motor would be as far to the right on this chart, higher weight normalized score as possible. And we do see that 
his motor is the best performing of all of the Pilot branded motors that we're looking at today. However, the pilots that do mainly freestyle and mainly precision freestyle, their motors tend to be a lot lower down on this chart. So we look at the Mr. Steel, the Hype Train Cricket, the Let's Fly RC. These are freestyle pilots and their motors are a lot less powerful for their weight. And I think this is something that is, is really interesting to talk about, which is using the performance characteristics of your motor to change the flight feel of the quad. In a situation where you don't have access to or you don't use tools like RC smoothing, throttle scale and throttle expo, then the only way you can get really precise low throttle control is by choosing a light pitch prop that doesn't produce much thrust and a weak motor that doesn't produce much power. And we see that particularly with Mr. Steele's props and motors. He makes very light pitch props that don't produce much thrust and his motors are quite weak. They don't produce much power. And so that gives him a lot of low throttle control, a lot of low throttle precision at the cost of very little top end power. So that's the trade off that he's making. If you have access to RC smoothing, throttle expo and throttle scale because you're flying beta flight, then you can have the best of both worlds. You don't have to give up top end power to get low throttle precision. What you're much better off doing is picking a motor that's very powerful, very responsive, is far to the right on this chart, something made by RC and Power or the AOS Supernova, and then getting that low throttle control and feel that you want using Throttle Expo and RC smoothing. So for example, if you want a very smooth throttle response, then just add a bit of RC smoothing so that when you move the throttle stick, there's that smoothed out before it's passed to the motors so that the motors don't jump in terms of throttle, you get a nice smooth throttle response. And if you want more low throttle control, then use Throttle Expo to kind of damp down the, um, the sensitivity of the throttle stick low in the throttle so that you get much more precise throttle control and then you'll still get all of the top end power if you decide to go to full throttle. And if that top end performance is too much, so you're just finding that full throttle is just too much throttle, then use throttle scale to bring the, bring the top level down. And then that gives you, you know, nice, precise low throttle control. And also full throttle is controllable and manageable is the right amount. The benefit of doing all of that is that you're only changing the stick response, so the quad's response to your stick inputs. The flight controller still has access to all of that power, all of that performance, and all of that responsiveness to keep the quad absolutely stable, locked to your sticks, to fight against any wind or any turbulence, and um, that's just going to give you the best possible response. That's going to give you a quad that feels exactly how you want it to feel, and stays absolutely locked to your stick inputs so that you know it's absolutely precise it's like razor sharp when you're flying it and so you know that's what we should all be trying to do and i'm going to be putting together a tuning video for beta flight 4.5 and i'm going to spend a lot of time talking about how you can use throttle expo throttle scale and all of that rc smoothing to get the perfect stick feel and stick response that you want whilst giving the flight controller the most responsive uh, quad, the quad with the most authority that's gonna stay absolutely locked to your sticks when you're flying. So if you can't wait for that video, make sure you're subscribed, hit that notification bell so that you see that video as soon as it becomes available. That's all I have for you for today. So until next time, I wish you all very, very happy flying.